What's up, everybody? It is time for the Kalispell Warhawk offseason. It is the 10th edition of the offseason, which makes this officially the longest dynasty I've ever done, now surpassing the Minnesota Gophers dynasty that also went 10 seasons. Welcome, everybody, here on this wonderful Saturday morning. It's an early stream today, 11.30 a.m., had to make sure all of you got up at a reasonable time today. I'm looking out for you. Yeah, minor technical issues. For some reason, I edited one setting and then uh, YouTube wasn't reading my encoder, but it fixed itself relatively quickly. So here we go. Yes, it's an early stream today because I just have a busier afternoon and this is what needed to be done. Early morning. I've been up since 7. This is not early morning. I've gotten stuff done today. I have um, Cardinals franchise coming later to the channel. It's already been recorded and edited. Drinking out of the invisible bottle. I want that draft class. I'm not going to spoil anything for the offseason, but it was a really, really good overall draft class. Like the entirety. There were a lot of high rated players in that one. So you'll have to take a look at that later on. But the Cardinals are not the focus today. It's a different bird. Up a little bit, a few states. The Kalispell Warhawks are here. Like I mentioned, everybody, it is the 10th offseason of the series. And we are going to be entering a new era today. We're embarking on a new journey. It's been, you know, a long time since Brandon Warren made his uh, debut. And actually, I don't know when it was. Let me try to find the date of when we last had Brandon Warren and he did not play. So that would have been year 7, 8, 9, 10. Year 7, week 1. Kalispell, year 7, week 1. That was against Vanderbilt and it was April 2nd, 2018. So over a year. We spent with Brandon Warren, and now we've got to get used to a brand new quarterback and pretty much a brand new offense. Ten seasons, well, time to change schools. I don't know. I, we have a special thing going here, and also, one thing I expect we'll reach this season is that we will get to 100 career wins with Kalispell, which will be an awesome milestone. So that's what's happened so far. A tough climb in the beginning, but we really turned a corner and turned it sharp and never really lost momentum along the way, especially when Warren got to town. Thank you for the early super chats here in the stream. If I, I always see them and I have a screen that shows all the super chats, but I might not get to them right away if I'm in the middle of something. But thank you, Hufer. Once again, need to fund Kane's internet GoFundMe so he's not late. It wasn't an internet issue, actually. The internet's been really stable, and I think the one issue I had, like, a couple months ago was that I was wired in, but it was still on a wireless connection, so I couldn't even <laughs> take that benefit. But, um, thank you for that. Gabe, thank you for your super chat. What's up, Kane? I love your videos and all the content you do, and I'm so excited to watch you start this new chapter of Kalispell with Luke Irvin. Also, I think you need to give Ali Kitchens more catches. Well, I think that you'll be pretty happy with what you see later in the, the Cardinals series. Not really much of a spoiler there. I already hinted at it at the uh, end of last episode. Austin, thank you for the super chat. Been watching live since UTSA. Love the content. That's a lot of dynasty. Between Kalispell, Minnesota, and UTSA, that is now 25 years of dynasty. 25. Why does it say you've only been here nine years? Because I haven't simulated yet to the offseason for it to add another number there. How far are you in the cards now? Um, today was the 2029 draft. So I believe we're about to be in year 11. No fun if we can't say late. I was a little bit late, I'm pretty sure. After I thought I'd be perfectly on time. How's the sinking, by the way? Is the sinking pretty much perfect? Three national championships must be nice. Oh, it is, Blackjack. It most certainly is. And everybody, big round of applause or whatever YouTube equivalent 
to Blackjack for his contributions here to the series. He's given us nine awesome draft classes, given us some storylines and players to care about, and it's certainly been a big boost to the series. So big thank you to Blackjack. Support him on Twitch where he makes content, twitch.tv slash theblackjackxxi. I appreciate uh, what he's been able to do here, and it's been fun to work together. You know, our thing isn't necessarily making the same content together, but the collaborative effort that goes into content is definitely something that um, we had wanted to do for a long time. Summertime, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Kane, could you play Mizzou in Season 11? I'll take a look at some various schools we have never seen before, preferably ones that are pretty good. And Mad Max, shout out the three-peat, been here since Minnesota. Thank you for that. Definitely shout out to the three-peat national title run. I did not think we'd make it this year, but it was the perfect storm. With all the teams above us losing, including UNC, obviously they lost to Clemson, and then Clemson lost to us by a few points. I already recapped the season, so we're not going to rehash that here. I want to get on to the offseason, and I have already done the editing now for Brandon Warren. So we know him to be 5'11", 190 pounds in that realm. And I compare him very much to Kyler Murray as a prospect. But for this sake, he will go undrafted if I don't edit this. I had to make him 6'3", 220 pounds. And we'll see where he ends up going in the draft. What did you think of the Blazers-Nuggets game last night? I actually fell asleep at 10.30. I couldn't uh, stay awake long. And then I woke up at 1.30. I look over. And I just see 4 OT. And I'm like, What? Basketball games don't go to four overtimes. And then I realized, like, this game was not over. <laughs> like, I know it's possible to go to four overtimes, but it doesn't happen. Yeah, Jokic had to play, what, 64 minutes? The problem there, too, is I'm not a basketball expert, but here's my basketball analysis, is that he played 64 minutes in a loss. That really sucks. So I think we'll see probably like a lot of Plumlee in the next game, wouldn't you assume? Did you see Endgame yet? I'm not a comic book movie guy, so I won't be seeing Endgame, but I hope uh, everybody's had a good time that's gotten a chance to see it. Kane, I think you look like Jokic. I think I've got that before. I get Aaron Rodgers. I've gotten Jokic. At least it's usually really good players. I'll take that. You'll probably still see Jokic play 38 minutes. Yeah, I mean, there's, of course, load management and everything during the season, so players can handle whatever it takes in the playoffs. Plus, there's no back-to-backs, thankfully. But, um, what is it, a one-day rest and then turn around? Let's see, Nuggets versus Blazers. They're playing tomorrow night, yeah. So no three-day rest or anything special. Long sim here, NCAA. So Blackjack, I heard I've been missing a lot on your recent uh, Festivus streams. I haven't seen the last one or two. The four-star life, I have not seen that yet. But it sounds like there are some exciting things happening over there. How many think that Tom Brady will retire soon? I mean, we can't be that far away. But I think we've been saying that for a long time. It does get more likely as the years continue on. But yeah, definitely give a follow to Blackjack on Twitch. He does a lot of live content. He does Dynasty. Twitch.tv slash TheBlackjackXXI. All right, so Boogie Turner leads Kalispell now in career sacks with 35. Carl Joyce broke the receiving touchdown record. And Brandon Warren has the career passing touchdown record. And he also broke the Marquise Walker record here for passing yards. Thank you, A-Alt. I appreciate that. Happy 10th season for the Hawks, Kane. Hope for more in the future. We're still going. We're still going strong, everybody. I don't know how long, but at this point... Let's let it ride. I mean, to see how much enthusiasm there still is after this long stretch of winning and knowing that there's a challenge on the horizon, I don't see us being done anytime soon. Before we advance, though, to the true offseason, I do want to see some bowl results. 
Yep, boogie in the record books, Blackjack. We all knew that he was going to be special. Wasn't sure if I'd get him because I used to have a lot of trouble getting those defensive tackles. That was the old narrative. Defensive tackles were impossible and so was the state of Ohio for some reason. Damon, thank you for the super chat. I know it's really early, but how do you think the Eagles do in 2019? I love how well my team has done this offseason. Yeah, and they just got Zach Brown too. Um, I think the Eagles will win the division. They're just a, a really loaded team, and they have the flexibility of being able to take an Andre Dillard who might not play a snap until 2020. And um, they do a really good job of making sure their defensive line is very deep. They're just a well-run team. Howie Roseman knows what he's doing. Plus, uh, D-Jax is back. I mean, they have depth at some really core spots. Like, they could handle, like, it wouldn't be good, but they could handle even an Ertz injury with the drafting of Dallas Goddard last year. They just keep getting the chance to take value they don't need, and that's when you know you're in a good spot. And also, I think last year was on the low end of their variance. Hopefully, Carson Wentz is healthier this season. Ugh. All right, so where are the teams around us then? Kalispell won their bowl game. It was Miami over Troy, Miami 11-3. The Ohio-Miami, by the way. They play in Oxford, though, not Miami. Oxford, Ohio. I'm pretty sure. It is Miami of Ohio. I forget why they call it Miami. It's the name of the campus, I'm pretty sure. Something. I looked it up like three weeks ago. Alabama lost to Texas 24-6. Penn State won theirs, and they should be having a new quarterback this year. And I plan to put Penn State on the schedule because I want to see their quarterback, everybody. Uh, what was his name? I, after Oliver Raymond, Lameka Warwick. Miami is a river in Ohio. That's interesting. Let's name uh, schools after rivers. That's probably already a thing. That's probably... Uh, a couple. Ugh. Kyler Murray or Dwayne Haskins? If you give me 10 years, I think Dwayne Haskins. But Murray... I'm surprised no one's made this um, distinction yet, this comparison. Remember when Chip Kelly came to the NFL and things were going to be done his way? Well, welcome to the Cliff Kingsbury world. And Steve Keim, who's... You know, hasn't been the best GM lately. I think when you take a team that was as good as the Cardinals were back when Carson Palmer made an MVP run and to how far they've fallen, that's a mark of a bad GM job. And all I'm going to say is don't be surprised if there's an outside chance of Kif Cliff Kingsbury, especially if they have like some success with his scheme, if he becomes Chip Kelly head coach GM in like a year. Sports fan 98 let's not talk about the draft. I'm still pissed. Too bad. Your Yankees beat the Twins yesterday. Therefore, the Giants are fair game. Gary Sanchez goes yard twice. Twins get after James Paxton, and it doesn't even matter because we can never get the Yankees out. They score at least six runs every time. I'm telling you, as a fan, one of the most like intimidating things I've ever seen was when the Twins went to New York in that wild card game and the twins were up what two nothing or three nothing in the first inning and the fans were going bonkers for every strike it was like yeah they know what's gonna happen they already know they're not worried and that made me very worried and then immediately dd gregorius ties it up bad memory of that game Ugh. Hello from Vancouver. What's going on, Joseph? Should Twins sign Kimbrel? They should at least consider it. Taking a little while here to get to the end of the season. Having a good time here. Cliff Kingsbury got a head coaching job having a losing record. What a joke. This is what happens, though. There are some hasty decisions. Not saying it was a bad decision necessarily because of his his overall record, but when something becomes the new trend, and this time it's the innovative, young, offensive coach who is like 32 years old. That's the new trend in the NFL. So we see Sean McVay. We, sh we see Zach Taylor. We see Cliff Kingsbury. And... um. 
you know, when you're in the forefront of this trend, it's easier to, to get your deal. And we see different trends. Sometimes it's on a coaching front. Sometimes it's on a player front. Like Richard Sherman paved the way for the tall press corners who might not be that fast to get drafted early. And that's why you see players like Stanley Jean-Baptiste went in the second round and his career really hasn't amounted to a ton. He was probably way overdrafted. All right, so I forgot about the potential of uh, losing coaches in the coach carousel. Um, but I want to make sure everybody knows when we get to the transferring and players leaving early, it's now a rule in the series. I will not prevent players from leaving to the draft early. I did that last year with Mario Townsend, but given it's very realistic for players to leave early and I just think it's a challenge we should have to deal with and just let happen. But as far as transfers go, I'll still convince them to stay. I usually try to if I think they're actually going to get playing time. So, Coach Carousel. And I was wrong last offseason. I did this. You do not get to pick your coordinators. I know I had thought I had discovered something. At first, I thought I discovered something that everybody else knew. But then, I realized I was wrong. I had to correct myself. I did not find that you could hire your own coordinators. And I wonder if we're going to be losing anybody. But we already signed the extension here for Leon Daniels. And we will sim to the end of the coach carousel. But when you're in this menu, you can see who becomes your new OC. It's just done for you. Yeah, uh, everybody misses this game, Z. I think that everybody... Uh, you know, has fond memories of NCAA, and this, you know, this was the, obviously the last one, but it's a, a good last one. So, this is just the coach carousel, seeing how it all plays out, and we'll have to see if we end up with a coordinator change. If we don't, that'll be a, a big win for us. Looks like we have a new OC. I didn't get to see him get hired. So, we have a new OC from TCU, Neil Brown. He was previously a 3-9 and nine head coach who runs the Air Raid. He's a C prestige. My previous OC hired by Maryland to be their offensive coordinator. Let's see if we have our defensive coordinator getting a new job. I think it would have listed us twice here, so we're probably okay. All right, to the next stage we go then, players leaving. Could there be some more drama this year? Maybe somebody like Tommy Jordan decides to try out for the NFL draft. Maybe we finally get our first transfer in school history. Festivus for Blackjack has transfers, and we don't. How would Leon Daniels do in the NFL as a coach? I think he'd do pretty well. He'd be a motivator. Is there potential that somebody like Montrell Bonds wants to leave after not getting much playing time as a freshman? Sometimes players react a lot to that, even if you're about to give them playing time. So, obviously, new OC, Neil Brown, and... A new member, Shadow Gaming. Thank you for becoming a member on the channel. I appreciate that. <clears throat> but Neil Brown. I'll be interested in his skill tree. Is it too early to see it? Don't think so. Why do I have 27 OC upgrades available? I can literally, like, max him out. Okay. Well, I can do that later on. Or I can just do it now. That's a lot. Yeah, literally he's a maxed out OC. Alright then. 
I think it's because he was a head coach and he changed jobs. So he still gets points. It's just you can't have an OC tree if you're a head coach. Do the Twins win the division now that Kluber is hurt for the year? Is he really out for the year? Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Tyler. I appreciate that. Um, I, I saw him get hit. Um, but was it really a season ender? Out indefinitely. Check back in a few weeks. Won't need surgery. It's a broken arm. I still think the Twins are going to win the division. Their offense is really, really good. All right, everybody. Players leaving. Here we go. True drama here in the Kalispell series, perhaps. Whoa! Wow! Maurice Collins is declaring for the draft, and so is Antoine Knightley. Montrell Bonds wants out. Ross Mastorovich wants out. So I can't say anything to Collins or Knightley. We let them go now. Mo Collins is not coming back after a a down season from his true takeoff year. Nightly though, I thought he'd be a number one or number two next year. Wow, he's declaring after just sixty four career catches and seven touchdowns. I'm not going to do anything because there are players who go early that go undrafted or go on day three late. And this is something I already said I intended to do to add challenge. And it's also realistic that players leave early. They want to secure that money. And you can't really fault them. But Ross Mustorovich and Montreal Bonds, we will try to talk to them. Brandon Warren is a first round prospect. So is Belafonte. And Carl Joyce. So Belafonte kind of gets a Josh Jacobs rise, although he's a very different kind of back. But he is the backup who played sparingly, but sure made an impact when given the chance. Mario Townsend works up from a fourth round pick to a second round pick. That's a nice chunk of change. Justin Payne, fourth round. And Marcus Payne in the fifth. That is a steal. Boogie in the sixth? Kidding me? Rodney Hall in the 6th, Manu Wai in the 6th, and then graduations. You're telling me Chris Baker wouldn't get drafted? It must be a height, weight, threshold thing with him. But you're telling me that uh, Thomas Roberts, vertical threat, wouldn't get drafted? Yeah, right. Wow. A lot of surprises here, but now trying to keep players. Montrell Bonds. I, he will play a lot this year. And I think he would have over 150 carries. But it's a very low persuasion chance. He'll play in more than nine games. That's the safest one. There are positives and negatives to both directions. We made it past the first step, though. Give him 300. He won't get anywhere near that. That's a promise I'd break. I don't know if I'll hang around for another year or not. <laughs> Aaron Higdon 2.0. Oh, man. He's going to Florida State, right? Is that FS or is it Fresno State? FSU is Florida State. That might be Fresno. Ross Mastorovich wants to go to Wyoming. Yeah. Losing both. Wow. He's going to Fresno State. So Aaron Higdon left to go to UAB. And Bonds is leaving to go to Fresno. 
do players ever get homesick anymore i feel like that's a transfer i haven't seen in a long time maybe it wasn't in ncaa 14 but it was in other ones remember the bonds hype video i put some effort into that it was a good thumbnail too <sighs> and i played uh this song let's see if i can find it on the first try The Montreal Bonds Anthem. 59 carries. He was set up to be maybe our lead back this year. Yeah, Mastorovich was going to be a man coverage beast. What was your favorite Montreal Bonds moment at Kalispell? The hype video? <laughs> Capix, thank you for the super chat. Make sure Warwick didn't transfer. That's a very good point. I think it's an outside chance, but there's a chance. Bonds should be the next running back one, right? You'd think so. But now transferring, I'll have to take a year off. Gone trail. Exactly. He is gone. Going down to Fresno, California. Oh, we'll make sure we play him. Remember UAB? We had the UAB game in the Minnesota series, and it was our first ever shutout in uh, series history. So let me just check on Penn State. Make sure Lameca isn't deciding to go elsewhere, and he doesn't appear to be transferring away. Okay. The door is open, then, for Lameca Warwick to take over for Tim Hardy. I wonder, like, how many carries it would have taken to get Bonds to not leave because, like, Marty had to get some of those touches. And I think getting 59 to Bonds, plus there had to have been a catch in there, like 60 touches, should have been enough. Oh, yeah, we have to make sure about Colbert. Um, I, I did edit him back to being a 99 overall player for Texas A&M. So we'll just take a look, make sure that he's a draft prospect. Come on, man. Justin Colbert not getting drafted. I wonder if it's because he didn't get production as a senior the way I had to do this. He didn't play this year because it would have been a fifth year technically. His receiver, though, Cliff McKeon's going first round probably. Yeah, this game is a journey. NCAA. Always a surprise around the corner. You know what? I am going to export this draft class just for fun. I never save these. I, the newest ones on here are probably three years old. Let's just... I don't know if I'll ever use this, but I might as well just save them. Doesn't Bonds have to sit out a year? Yes. Not overall 200 pounds? Oh, I didn't think about having to edit his stuff. I thought his height was good enough. That's unfortunate. If I ever go back to Madden 25, though, we'll have this class. Transferring is entirely placed on depth chart placement. If you want to prevent a player from transferring, move them up in the depth chart after the last game. Okay. I think at some point I moved Bonds to number three because I was tired of changing it every time I got into a game. But that's okay. I'm not really trying to game the system. Whatever happens, happens. I'm okay with it. We move on. What was Warren's projection? First round. Can you notice me? I see you, Didi. What's going on? 6'1", 200 pounds is the minimum. Okay, so I guess I messed it up then for uh, uh, Colbert, but I wasn't able to edit anyway. Not, uh, I could have when the stream had begun and I was still on that menu. So, transfer requests, anybody? No, in 10 years, not a single player. So, how many uh, Austin Jenkins fans are there in the comments today? Because I think running back one has been found. Draft results. First round, Brandon Warren. 
Marty Belafonte and Carl Joyce. I hope that in this universe, the same team was able to get Warren and Joyce together. And then Townsend. Look at all these draft picks. 11 picks. Mo Collins ends up going in the fourth. Boogie in the fifth. Steals of the draft. Realistically, I think Warren would be like a Kyler Murray type of player. I think he would go first round potentially. Belafonte, I think he would go second round. I think he would be a pick similar to Amir Abdullah or like a Ronald Jones or a Dalvin Cook. Um, Carl Joyce, there's a Will Fuller comp to be made there. First or second round, I could see. Townsend, I could see as early as round one. Uh, the comp for Townsend. He's like a less athletic version of Anthony Barr or Josh Allen. And I think that would make him a second round pick. Justin Payne, a solid route runner. I'd compare him to like a Sterling Shepard, but maybe a taller version. Um, just because of the route running abilities. Um, Payne, I'd see a mid-round pick on him. Maurice Collins, I'd see first or second. Just a solid player there. Uh, Marcus Payne, he, I actually think, would be a first-round running back. I'd look at him as a Todd Gurley type of player. Boogie Turner, absolutely first round. Dominant three tech. Undersized three tech. He'd get Aaron Donald comps and he'd go at least mid first round. Rodney Hall. I don't really have an opinion on the offensive lineman. I don't think Manu Wai would be draftable actually. He just gave up way too many sacks. Maybe a good run blocker though could sneak into the sixth. Uh, and Knightley. I think you'd go undrafted. There are my comps. Justin Payne is Demarius Thomas. I can kind of see those comps. I think athletically, size, Thomas, um, probably not as good of a route runner. There are other teams, though, to check on here. I want to see division rivals, conference rivals. You know what I mean. Alabama, they lose only a handful of first-round picks. Auburn had a couple. I love the off seasons here in NCAA. There's no draft, but it's still fun. There are more surprises in NCAAs with transfers and players leaving early and coaching changes. Duke had two receivers. Like your sweatshirt, Kane? Thank you. I was actually able to downgrade and... Sweatshirt thickness finally getting warm enough. I know that the the color correction seems to be not loving it though. Seems like a lot of flickering on this. Duke has receivers more than uh Daniel Jones had at Duke, that's for sure. Here's the thing, though, that's hilarious, is, like, narratives can change on a dime. Like, all it takes is Daniel Jones in the first preseason game going, like, 9 for 12 with 130 yards and two touchdowns, and immediately the narrative begins to shift. I love when the narrative shifts based on a small event, and I'm looking forward to this preseason. Because I think Daniel Jones is the exact kind of quarterback that could do well in the preseason. Nobody from Miami? Are you serious? I want to check on them because I think big schools that didn't lose great talent are always interesting matchups. My narrative will always be tank for Lawrence. Well, at least you know that you could be good this year and just be bad the year after. So. I wonder if they'll ever... They've got to change the rules at some point, I feel. Look at all the skill talent here out of Nebraska. But, um... 
you know, I wonder if they'll eventually get to the point where 18 year olds can join the NBA draft again. And if they will uh, make it maybe two years post high school for football players. At certain positions, I think that you don't really need a, a ton of college experience necessarily. There, It's just, do you really gear rules around exceptions? Like Trevor Lawrence probably could be an NFL player this year, but how many first year college players could make that move? Do you gear rules around them? Because there are hundreds of other quarterbacks that you've got to keep in mind and players overall. Penn State lost the first round quarterback. A few corners to the draft too. What if the NFL went to more of a baseball route where you just drafted players rights whenever you feel like it? And they can either accept or decline. Like if you could draft players rights, would Trevor Lawrence go before Kyler Murray? Probably not. But Lawrence would have gone very early in this draft, I'm sure. The Raiders would have taken him. They had three first-round picks. So that was his floor, if that was possible. Marquise Walker's coming back, DD. Don't worry. I know everybody's like, where's Marquise Walker? He is just on a little vacation right now. It's all good. Harvey Mullins was in the Heisman race. I'll be really interested, too, later on to check on the depth chart for Fresno, just to see if there's a path to the number one spot for Bonds in a year, because we'll have to wait it out. All right, when is cards off season? Later today on the second channel. Without Bonds, Stanford's going to win again. Uh, I don't want to talk about Stanford and our losses against them. Recruiting should be pretty simple. No, Manziel went after a, a red shirt sophomore year, Jordan, and that was considered to be like really early and out of the ordinary. And now red shirt sophomores, they're pretty much in every class. Earlier and earlier, players want to declare. Um, sometimes it works out for them. Sometimes it doesn't. I think the big issue is that the more players that do it, the lower your floor becomes. Like, I think if you look at the numbers compared to 10 years ago, how many underclassmen declare? Like, before, when it wasn't that many, like, you were in good shape. But now, if there are, what, a couple hundred players or probably around 100 players, how many underclassmen were in the last draft? There's only so many players can fit in the first few rounds. Uh, there were 103 underclassmen who received special eligibility. 30 went undrafted. That's 30%. Here's the thing. When a strategy is useful, it's only as useful as you have like the edge like a strategy is useful when you're using it and somebody else isn't but when everybody else uses it now you got to get a new edge and it's just a cycle that happens in everything sports business you name it the edge only exists and then when everybody knows about it the edge is gone <clears throat> all right recruiting time it looks like And this ought to be pretty simple. It's been simple for a couple of years. We have one or two targets. We dump all the points there. And we sim. Kane, you would like it down here in southeast Texas at 78 and sunny. I can't think of anything better than 78 and sunny with minimal humidity. What I miss? Oh, Brandon, you missed a couple things. Couple players went to the NFL draft early. Couple players transferred. Montreal Bonds is gone. Sylvester Rosthorn's getting at least 10K, by the way. What happened to you moving, Kane? It's still a plan this year. Still a plan.
Mr. Hurricane wants to be warm more often. I don't like being cold, man. When I'm cold for like seven months in a row, it's like, what is this? What happened with Kojo Clark? Um, he ended up going to a school. <laughs> I uh, forget which school. Hey, Blackjack, if you're still here, do you remember um, Kojo Clark's state? I'm not on a very m big delay here, so I should get your answer pretty quick. Oh, Blackjack is here. What's the state for Kojo? California. Oh, great. Only a handful of quarterbacks come out of there. Kojo Clark went to Stanford. Yep. And he was vastly underrated. Do you see that top, uh, that plus 13, three star? Yeah, that's a little inaccurate. A four or five would have been appropriate. Huntington Beach, California, the home of Jesse Heikinen. I know a lot of you are talking too about me doing Warren in Madden 20's new QB1 face of the fran face of the franchise. If UCLA was in there, man, um, Heikinen would be awesome to do that for because it would actually be accurate to the team at least. I think the only school that's had a high big name prospect from this series that's going to be in Madden 20 would be Taquan Layton for FSU. Why so early? I, I have some stuff to do this afternoon, and so I had to get this out of the way uh, earlier, which also meant I had to wait less, and I was looking forward to that. Cruz is two for two against Hap. Oh, that's right. Um, they had a noon start or a 12:30 start today. Are the Twins losing already? They oh, it's the first inning. J A Hap already has a couple Ks. If only Kalispell is in Madden 20. I know. Move on to the football world. So, other players we could potentially add points to here. Ashton Phillips, a strong safety from Maryland Heights, Ohio. I love, or Montana. Why did I say Ohio? I saw the, the O. Or is M.O. Missouri? M.T.'s Montana. There are some that always get me. Like A.K. I always think is Arkansas and I think it's Alaska. Maryland Heights. Eric Watson from Arkadelphia. That is made up. Hungry Gamer. Thank you for the super chat. Kane, just a suggestion to make it more challenging for the future. If a recruit locks you out and you're not in the top three, you can't unlock them. Um, yeah, I can see that as a potential house rule to add. At some point, you just get cut off and you can't break the lock regardless. Kane, you should have been my GM instead of Mayock. Thank you, John Gruden. But I think Mayock, uh, I think Mayock's a good talent evaluator. Um, I think he'll bring in good players, but like Cleland Furl number four, like that's not the right value. You could have traded down. They took him over Josh Allen, which to me is just like, what? Josh Allen was a steal. Ed Oliver was a steal. Oh, I know Arkadelphia is real. It's not the first time I've seen the town, but uh, it kind of sounds made up. It's the Philadelphia of the South, so I've been told by absolutely nobody, but it makes sense. Do they have their own, like, Liberty Bell? They have, like, cheesesteak down there, but it's, like, made out of fish instead or something. Yeah, Furl has a high floor, 
I thought Furl would possibly be the Panthers pick. Um, I do agree with that. I think 8 out of 10 drafts, Furl at 4 makes sense, just not this one. Yeah, I kind of felt that way about Josh Allen. I think in a lot of drafts, he would be edge 1. Like, the year that Leonard Floyd was edge 1. I think Josh Allen would have been number 1 that year. The Razor Steak Sandwich. Tell me more. That sounds pretty good. I'm actually in Arkadelphia right now, so you can confirm it's real. Okay, Super Chats flooding in here. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it very much. Um, okay, I need uh, this to refresh, though. Why is my Super Chat menu not refreshing? Oh, it is. Hufer's just on here again. All right, Blake, if Madden 20 is not terrible and you can handle the franchise mode, will you use the Dolphins again since they did not get their chance to shine? Possibly. I don't want to think too far ahead just because we got to see the state the game's in as far as gameplay goes. You know, you can say whatever you want about the features they've talked about. I think that, you know, it's mostly a positive step and I like the idea of the scenario engine, um, but gameplay is king. And I've got to see how the gameplay is. But, I mean, if you look at the last eight years, seven Maddens worked, one didn't. I think odds are in the favor of it working out. So, we'll see. Lucas, glad the stream is earlier than usual today. I can watch it live before work instead of after. By the way, love the channel. Been here since UTSA. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Lucas. And I knew doing this earlier would be convenient for at least some, especially those outside of the United States. I'm sure it's at a really reasonable time for those of you in Europe or anywhere else. And Hufer, Raiders tried the trade, but no one wanted to. I'd love to know the truth behind that because nobody wanting the trade when Oliver, when Haskins, when Allen was on the board seems unlikely, but need two to tango there, of course. I'm happy the Steelers got Devin Bush. Yeah, they're not a team that normally trades up. I didn't think they would, especially for an inside linebacker. But, I mean, when you can get a difference maker that fills a big hole on the roster, you got to do it. And um, I think that was a good move on their part. It was the right time and place to do it. They were also pretty uh, lucky that there were two really high really touted inside linebackers so they could handle taking the second guy because if there was only one they would have been screwed the falcons draft i liked it at the beginning taking the two offensive linemen they've got to protect matt ryan a lot better matt ryan's really good quarterback all right everybody so how do we think we should handle this i have really been uh busy in the chat today I think I'm uh, needing to get some of this stuff done. Josh Townsend, those are good skills. I'm glad I checked because you are getting the scholarship offer. But I don't know if he's taking the trip to Kalispell. Those are really good ratings for a 69 overall. Like tackling is super low, press is low, but... You got to take a look at what kind of uh, an overall player is this guy. If he's well-rounded, you're less interested sometimes. But if there's a trait or two that stands out, then you know you got something special. Just like um, in the twin series, uh, Ty Gonzalez, 78 overall baseball player. But that's factoring in bad speed, bad fielding, bad arm. So he's a great hitter. What do you think about Devin White on the Bucks? Yeah, it's solid. It fills that hole that Quan Alexander left behind. Um, the defense has a ways to go, though. Well, 1,200 there. Let me check out some other skill sets here on anybody else. Ashton Phillips is a good tackler. I already have a backup quarterback similar to Watson. Not going to offer to Adam Holmes. Joe Owens. Kind of got some Mario Townsend vibes going on with this skill set. Maybe not quite as good.
David Baker. I think I'll pass. Travis Martin has speed. I think we're okay. I'll put like 100 points into Martin. So I'll give some more to Josh Townsend. I think 10K ought to be enough. Let me go 11. That means if anybody else did 10K, I'd still be higher. And then I can dump the rest here into Josh Townsend. See if there's a running back not committed. I've already scoured the board for everything. I feel like anyway, but you know what? Losing three running backs this offseason, maybe it's worth a look. Who is your biggest rival, Penn State or Stanford? Um, Those are two one-sided rivalries. To us, I look at our biggest rival being Stanford because we just can't beat them despite playing well against them last year. Um, yeah, we don't have the best options here, but as far as realistic options, second place here for Hickman, 88 speed, 85 Excel, wasn't the best skill set here, just wasn't really thrilled. Curtis Tillman has, oh, we haven't scouted him, but C speed. Tony White, haven't scouted him. Kenny Fuqua, 5'9", 209. Yeah, he's 82% locked. I think I had some running backs on the board earlier, and it just didn't work out this year. And I felt like we had depth with Bonds and Jenkins and Jim Jackson. And we're just going to move on. There was a 15% four-star. Talking about Mark Robinson. There was a 15% four star. I don't see a 15 unless I have to work this differently. David Rogers. Tyler Sugden. Thank you for the super chat. Early predictions for offensive rookie and defensive rookie of the year. Um, Defensive rookie of the year. I'm going to say Josh Allen. He's stepping into a really good defense. He's going to be surrounded by a lot of great talent, and I think that's going to open him up to get some good sack production. Um, Quinnen Williams could also, but I think that Josh Allen can be used in so many ways that he can rack up the kind of stat line that will get you there. Offensive, I'm going to say definitely has a chance to be Kyler Murray, but ooh, this is tough. I kind of want to go A.J. Brown, but it's like a running offense with Corey Davis already. I don't know if he gets the touchdowns. Oh. Hollywood Brown, that's possible. I'm not sure if he'll get the touchdowns, though. Um, Hawkinson would have a chance. Man. David Montgomery. That's not a bad option. David Montgomery. I kind of like that one. All right. So a lot of you were talking David Rogers here. We know nothing about him. M. Robinson runs a 4 3 6. Oops. One too far. Yeah, but the skill set at a 64 overall, most likely. I 
I think we're okay. We have some good talent on the team right now. And I like, you know, we had Jim Jackson in the Montreal Bonds class. I think Jackson's kind of the forgotten running back here in this group. Um, do I really want to take points off Townsend? I, I want to leave this the way it is. I don't want to risk any of that. We're going to advance, and I'll show you when we get to the stage, you know, what our depth chart looks like at some of these areas. Can you still... Can you still scout in the offseason? I didn't think you could. I'll, I could at least open up 100 points, I guess. Super chat for sports fan 98. Bold predictions for rookie of the year. Debo and Juan Thornhill. Debo's a nice pick. Yeah, Debo Samuel, especially in that offense. I'm excited to see what San Francisco and Arizona can both do this year. Uh, they both made sure they got playmakers this season. Oh, I offered him a scholarship. I need to get points to scout. nothing special all right i am moving on i am ready we're okay who'd the colts take at wide receiver wasn't it a speed guy um i forget exactly who they got Paris Campbell, that's right. Paris Campbell. It's interesting that they come back to that after the Dorset debacle a couple of years ago in the first round. Buford, thank you. Josh Jacobs, they just put Crowell on IR. Yeah, Jacobs could definitely be in the running for that. I'm sure he'll get the running back one workload for the most part. Yeah, this offseason is setting up for just another fun year. Oakland's going to be interesting now with adding Antonio Brown. And don't forget about Tyrell the Gazelle Williams. Aren't they, like, really thin at tight end, though? They let Jared Cook go. And I forget who their top guy in the depth chart is right now. But it wasn't uh, someone who's usually a starting tight end. Who's the Raiders starter? If you ever want to see the depth charts this time of year ourlads.com go to nfl depth charts and they have basically all the projected depth charts updated pretty often and right now they would have it as Derek carrier and then luke wilson they also took foster moreau also it has all the rookies in green on the our lads depth charts it's a good source to use darren waller that was the one i was thinking of waller was a wide receiver i believe out of georgia tech and they moved him to tight end. I think Baltimore did. He was a Madden beast. Sylvester Ross Thorne. Joe Owens. Josh Townsend. Not bad. Pretty happy with that. Thoughts on the Vikings? I feel good about my Vikings. You know, offensive line was definitely a concern. Bradbury helps. Uh, if Josh Klein can kind of bounce back this year that'll definitely help i'm still worried though about reef and if o'neill's ready you know they're really banking on the tackles that they had last year playing better so we'll see it's not going to be a great offensive line but if they can get closer to average they'll be okay i stole a prospect So we got Joe Owens, a 5-5-5 five, five, five gap. Todd Roswell picks Oklahoma State. Alabama gets Ashton Phillips. Eric Watson chooses TCU. Rosthorn. We won by a lot. A lot. Josh Townsend. Oh, that was pretty easy. Any surprise walk-ons this year? Nope. 
But definitely expect now with us losing, we lose Roberts, we lose Joyce, we lose Payne, and we lose Knightley to the draft. Sherrod Edwards, true freshman, might be a number one wide receiver next season. Thoughts on the Cowboys? They're becoming a more complete team year by year. They should be in the wild card mix or the playoff mix as well. Uh, the division mix, that is. Um, definitely a big year for Prescott, though. But I'm impressed what they've done on defense because I don't think it was obvious they were going to get a whole lot better, but they've continued to make improvements, and they were really good at times last season. Remember when they shut down the Saints? Leighton Van Der Esch helps. All right, position changes. We have two athletes joining the team. Matt Reddick. I think a lot of us are going to want to see him actually play quarterback after all. His skill set, you know, made me think running back. But if he gets a couple of years of experience, he'll never be a top tier quarterback. But he'd be our only mobile option, and at least he has speed, and he has a functioning throwing arm. I think Reddick is best put as a quarterback. He'd be a 69 overall, better at other spots, but I'd like to have that backup that can run a little bit. We need the depth. And then Sean Merville, 5'11", 173 with speed. And cover ability. Doesn't have great hands. He's definitely a defensive back. His press is 68. He fits better as a safety in that case. Especially um, also not having the best tackling. Maybe free safety. Could Mervil play running back? Oh yeah, he has 92 elusiveness. 94 juke. Ooh, I forgot about that. I was looking at the receiver skills. Which aren't fantastic, but wow, the elusiveness is certainly there. I can take care of ball carrier vision. We think running back or we think in safety? Pretty deep at safety. 72 overall running back. 72 corner, 74 free. I think running back with our depth given at safety already so three quarterbacks on the roster Luke Irvin set to be the number one QB one this year if you look at the throwing differences obviously Reddick is not very accurate but could Reddick be the backup maybe if we can be comfortable sacrificing the accuracy at running back Austin Jenkins Jim Jackson Sean Merville Jermaine McIntyre, Curtis Tillman, Mark Robinson. This is pre-training, so I shouldn't go through everything in great depth, really. At wide receiver, going to be really interesting, Blackjack, because Colt Sully might actually have a primary role on this team. Oh, yeah, don't forget about Nick Lindsay. Lindsay's a redshirt freshman. We're going to see his ratings still go up, but he has really good route running. So he can take over maybe for that Justin Payne role. I'm not sure there was anybody else that wanted to change positions, but I might even out some spots. We have three strong safeties, four free safeties, very deep here, including Elliot Red. Oh yeah, Tommy Jordan didn't go pro. That's good news. Colt Sully was always supposed to be like wide receiver four, three at best. He's a slot guy now. Now he might be number two. He won't beat out Houston, but he's going to get on the field. Our linebacker situation is not as great as it once was. We just lost so many in a short amount of time. Uh, D tackle. Obviously losing Boogie is never going to be easy. Um... Trey Walker, obviously he's going to play a variety of roles for us. Move Howard to running back? I considered that.
I'm going to move Walker to left end. Ronnie Howard. He'd be a 78 overall halfback. King, thank you for the super chat. Did you check recruiting class rankings? It said we signed the top five class. I will check that. But I'm not surprised we were top five. We were already close and then got Rosthorn, so that makes sense. Um, it's not going to show the skill set here. So 90 speed, 87 agility, 83 trucking, actually. Good ball carrier vision and stiff arm plus spin. He can catch the ball well enough. And he's a sophomore. So, obviously, I'd probably call him third string free safety in that case. Um, what's his cover skills like? Yeah, Red is not as good, but Elliot Red's going to be a star. And Tommy Jordan's already pretty good. At the strong side, we have Akinjide. And then Craig Arnold is senior as the backup. I do think moving red to strong safety could work. It's not really necessary because I can just play him there. Don't have to list him there necessarily. And then for Howard, I just have to decide, you know, do I want to develop him as a running back for this year or develop him as a safety? Obviously, we have Jenkins, who's already very athletic. I don't know if I want to move Howard to offense. He still has three years to play, and his cover skills are so good, he might even be better at corner than safety moving forward. We're going to be losing Juno after this year, so there's a chance that next year Howard, or even this year, Howard could play one of the corner spots. We lost Justin Garcia, and we're left with some good cover players still. Okay, Robinson's solid. So is Rice and Doucette. So what are we thinking? And this is also pre- uh, training still. Corner kind of seems like the right move. So we're moving him to corner. Only two tight ends. Actually, technically three, considering Keenan Gabbard. Let me make sure offensive line is solid. I think it is. At least two at every spot but right tackle. I'm probably going to play Roz Thorn right away as a true freshman. Really good tackle situation now for our pocket quarterback. Awareness. Yeah, um, sometimes when you change positions, it like resets it. I kind of understand what they're doing there. What was Howard's awareness earlier? I can always check it later on, but 64 does not seem like something out of the ordinary. I think we're okay with the stage. Hungry Gamer, I swear Jamari Akinjide has been at Kalispell since Austin Bradley was the backup quarterback. Yeah, it's funny. Every year there's that player that feels like he's been there forever. And this year it was Hunter Renfro. I remember when that player was Noel Devine for West Virginia. I felt like he was there for ages. Do you feel like that happens here in Kalispell? Sports fan, with red size, he can be a dime linebacker and shut down tight ends. Also be aware of Merville's low break tackle. Yeah, um, someone suggested red playing linebacker with that range. Very, very scary. But he could do really well on that role. His awareness was 80. Okay. I did move the athletes. 
Training results. So Howard's awareness was 80. Got it. Oh, thoughts on Devin Singletary? I don't know much about him. So Rick Thomas is now the highest overall player on the team. 97 overall kicker. Tommy Jordan is a 95. The Duck is a member now on the channel. Thank you for joining. Jamari Akinjide, 95. Daniel Foster, a 92. Juno Springs. Johnny Cabral. Brandon Smith. Brandon Williams. Jaquan Cunningham. Big season, hopefully, for Austin Jenkins. He's going to be running back one. Mike Butler, Jaron Williams, James Huggins, Tyrone Houston. Now we're asking for a lot more from him. Colt Sully, only a plus three blackjack. What happened? Nice plus six here for Kyle Malone. Fastest player on the team is Maurice Doucette, and then it's Tyrone Houston. Strongest player is Mike Butler. Austin Jenkins is the most agile, and he's about to be running back one, so that's big time. Acceleration, Johnny. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Top two acceleration players. Well, tied for first. Offensive lineman. Um, oh yeah, this isn't the full roster, obviously, because it doesn't include the newest players, so um, it doesn't show Elliot Red, because he wasn't already on the team. Hey JT, thank you for the super chat, left for a few minutes, but had to come back to get to that 1k viewers, keep it up Kane, thank you. We did reach 1k, the peak was 1047, thank you guys. Please leave a like on the video if you haven't, by the way, what are we at right now? Let me check out the page here. We're looking at 207. Let's get those likes up a little bit. One sec. I lost my spot here. There we go. What's Cabral's carrying? All right. 75 speed, 98 acceleration, carrying 40. Okay. He's not a running back. Luke Irvin, QB1. Glad he didn't transfer. Imagine if he did. The accuracy is off the charts. And his mobility now. Does anybody somehow remember JR Battle's speed? Because I feel like it wasn't 70. 70 is enough to scramble from pressure. It's not enough to run the option, but it's enough to be functional. Keep up the great work, Kane. Thank you, Moyo. Sixty-eight ish, it was fifty-seven, battles was like sixty, seemed like thirty-six, twenty-seven. <laughs> yeah, so Irvin, he's a pocket quarterback, but he'll be able to improvise a little bit. What's uh his throw on the run? Yeah, let's not show it here. Throw on the runs at NCAA, right? I'm pretty sure it is. Or maybe not. Wow, is it really that old that throw on the run doesn't exist? Okay. Jenkins and Jackson might be the one-two punch this year. Can Jackson bring the power at 218 pounds? He certainly can. He'll be given every chance to try. Air raid quarterback right there. I, I kind of see... Uh, where you're coming from with that. I do think that <clears throat> we have a pretty good quarterback option here in Luke Irvin. The scheme's going to change, but I think we'll be good. Tyrone Houston. He now takes over for Carl Joyce as the primary deep threat. Hands are still somewhat of a concern. He will drop passes, but he has speed and he gets open. 
Drake Maddox is your new tight end one. Excited about him taking over for Thomas Roberts, but he's still a little raw. What happened to Bonds? He has decided to call Fresno State his new home. Oh yeah, Jim Jackson's carrying. That's just a thing in NCAA. Like, they don't have a fumble slider. I think their whole thing is just, we're going to make carrying ratings low. And 74 to me is not low, because a lot of running backs that you'll scout have like 55. That's why I recommend, if you can, find you a running back that's actually an athlete, because they'll have higher carrying. Battle had 57 speed as a senior. Wow. But yeah, Bonds is gone. Nice development here for the offensive lineman, Eric Bryant. I think we had a decent enough roster to make up for Maurice Collins leaving early. Definitely wasn't I, what I expected. Oh, and Bill Long. Like, we didn't get to see him much last year. Thankfully, he didn't transfer, but this could be uh, his chance to shine. We'll have to see, though, because nobody outside of Cunningham seems to have that high... Uh... Oh, no, that was hit power. Yeah, I knew Long could rush the pass, so that didn't seem right. He'll take over for Boogie. Not bad. James Huggins now has 90 speed at linebacker. Not sure. I'm sorting by acceleration, so that's why it's a little weird. It's a good team. But now we have to cut somebody, maybe. Not guaranteed. I need a team that consists of Fred Arnold, Aaron Higdon, Montrell Bonds, and Amari Cooper. <laughs> oh, man. Kane, you don't have a punter? I should. I should absolutely have a punter. Cedric Parks graduated, though. crap <laughs> what happened did i forget about punting dominique day welcome to kalispell we can't cut you <laughs> how have i been james i'm doing well hope you're doing well as well oh man Rick Thomas might be doing both this year. I've done that before. Dominique Day. We have a walk-on quarterback, Eric Washington, a scrambler with 73 speed. Wait, where is the accuracy? I just got to see what a walk-on quarterback can do. 61 and 65. This is a Festivus quarterback right here. But yeah, we're going to be cutting him. Roster spot available now for a potential transfer. Wasn't Mark Robinson who y'all wanted? Did he just walk on to here? Okay. Well, there you go. You're welcome. Two fullbacks, Trey Dunn, 71 speed. He's not horrible. He's a 43 overall somehow. Wide receivers, no walk-ons. I can just keep the walk-ons. We have a 69-man a roster that opens up one spot for a, um, a walk-on or a transfer that we'll never get anyway.
So we have a walk-on punter. That's pretty cool. Hashtag let day play. Is that just something I should have to deal with? Don't let a kicker also punt. I just have to deal with my bad punter. Should that be like a rule? I mean, the CPU would deal with it. The CPU often has walk-on kickers, by the way. I should have to deal with it due to my, me not getting a punter. All right, Dominique Day, punter. It is indeed a new day. It would be hilarious to see how Kalispell overcomes 30-yard punts. Uh, any of you have fun weekend plans then? I know it's very early in the weekend. It's only 12.51 Central Time. By the way, I'm going to have to get out of here around 1.30, so I do want to kind of speed up the rest of this so we can get on the field and at least get a solid 25, 30 minutes at least to practice. We'll do more, of course. Um, custom conferences, don't have to touch that stuff. Let's get to preseason and get on the field. Watching your videos all weekend. All right. Derby day. That's right. Game of Thrones tomorrow. I don't watch Game of Thrones, but it's kind of fun to see, like, Twitter erupt when stuff happens. No, actually, gamer, uh, Day's punts will never be returned for touchdown because they'll be too short. We'll be very... Uh, much in position to make tackles high school combine this sunday high schools do combines maybe larger high schools do going to see end game tonight awesome doesn't watch marvel doesn't watch game of thrones what do you watch um i watched about four episodes of psych last night and then i watched uh the basketball games until i fall asleep Maybe eventually I'll give a superhero movie or something a shot. I know they have some Netflix series too. Are those good? Like, I just noticed them one day. It's like Marvel has uh, some different series on there about different characters that I had never heard of. But I guess they're just fleshing out the universe. Taking out my girlfriend on the weekend. We'll have a good time. Pick the right uh, food establishments. It's always uh, key. You watch Psych? Have you found all the pineapples? No, I haven't seen every episode. I've watched like the first five, six seasons or something like that. I haven't seen the last season or two. Um, but I'll get there. I'm in the process right now. I had a really good marathon of it last night, though. I was uh, really into it. Let's see. Don't have to worry about schedules or anything yet. We need to get on the field. I'll worry about numbers and stuff later on. You can leave suggestions more so in the comments after the video has been posted here. Everything is subject to change. Currently, I'm in the 19th inning of a Road to the Show game. I'm not sure if it will ever end. Yeah, sometimes that'll happen. Or you'll be like, I want to get through one game. And you'll have like 17 fielding events in the game. And half of them are like line drives over your head. Ugh. The road to the show could be frustrating sometimes. Yep, Marquise is going to return. Don't worry. We have to see how far Big Play Day can punt. I guess so. You do watch Star Wars, right? About that. <laughs> um, next question. I know that today is May 4th. Kind of a... Is it a big day for Star Wars beyond just the pun of the day? May the 4th be with you. Detroit Tigers, the show 20. We'll see what the future holds, but I'm leaning towards continuing baseball content and um, 
possibly looking at something else next year. It's just the pun. It's not like a anniversary or anything. Okay. We live in a society that makes a holiday out of everything, so. Just kind of the way it goes. This is not my playbook. Or is it? Why does this seem so wrong? Something seems off here, but these formations are all correct. Oh well. Ugh. Yeah, we do have a new OC. I think it loaded in my playbook, though, no problem. Um, I'm going to back up to about the 50. And I will take a look at what we can do. Irvin's probably not going to wear number one, by the way. Look at that arm. Uh, we'll change Irvin's number. A lot of these numbers are going to change for next year. Oh, man. Irvin out to Drake Maddox. Could see a whole lot of that this year. Look at that. Threading the needle to Nick Lindsay. Ooh, that was a nice pass. I know last year we got to throw for the first time with Irvin, and it was like, oh yeah, he's ready. But is Colt Sully ready? He drops one. He catches this one. Keep one. I thought the Jacory Day uh, fan club would be... Very angry right now. I know Ross Thorn isn't out there right now. I might need to just edit the depth chart a little bit. Especially we have to see Sherrod Edwards. Yeah, Edwards. We cannot forget about him. Austin Jenkins, RB1, after being running back four last season. I feel like we're usually a bit more prepared for some of these players advancing up the depth chart, like moving up three spots. That doesn't seem like a, a normal callous spell move. Let's try a, a scramble with Irvin next uh, pass play I get. So they're going to blitz. We roll right Festivus style. And turning the corner on this defense is beyond difficult. But yes, Sherrod Edwards. Stopping on a dime right there. And down inside the 10. Edwards was one of the best receivers in this class. Ooh, tipped away. I should also see the way that Irving can throw outside the pocket. I think it should be mostly good. Ooh. That's money. If you run the option, it's going to look very different. Irvin is not uh, an option quarterback. And Brandon Warren, by the way, was like in the top percentile of speed quarterbacks. He was an athlete, which means his skill set was more complete than most. Like athletes give you the best ceiling at any position. They really do. They usually end up being the fastest players, too. Ooh. Huh. 
How's the uh, game audio? Do you guys want a little bit more or is it good? That's a good throw. Ho oh, ho, Sherrod Edwards. Oh man, the Luke Irvin era. I'm excited for this season. I'm not sure if Edwards will stay with 81, but maybe. Sherrod going to want some socks. <clears throat> yep, any player that Blackjack has created for the series, he gets full creative control over. Just for potential thumbnail purposes. Leave a little spot in the corner there for his overall, maybe. Or a rating. I'm not too concerned about numbers right now, though. I think a lot of them will change when we get to the actual season. Just don't have the time to do it today. I'll be streaming for about another half hour. Doing a practice. And, of course, we'll have the dedicated practice stream. Which is something I, I look forward to every season. We have not been able to run the ball against our defense, but it's our defense. Oh, it was actually a good idea. Yeah, Maddox is staying with five. There's a reason he had it. Blackjack. It actually worked. If I didn't go out of bounds, it would have been amazing. The hurdle is not a useless move. That's cool. That's what I'm talking about. Let's look at Jim Jackson for a bit. Yeah, we've seen Jenkins before in garbage time, especially two years ago, but I like running back by committee systems. And Jim Jackson will be the next player in line there. Um, I feel like we haven't seen enough of Nick Lindsay. We'll just get a better look at Houston overall. Jim Jackson. Let's switch the formation. Let's go uh, shotgun ace. Or actually, let's go under center ace. There are some plays here I hope they don't call, and they're absolutely going to. Halfback pass, play action, all go, jet sweep. This is a good play, though. Yeah, I'll have to get used to... I might have to watch some of the older episodes to see kind of the formations and the ways I used to play with um, JR Battle. It's just been over a year now. So Jackson, not the most dynamic. I don't think he'll be catching a lot of passes out of the backfield. Ooh, be nice to our receivers. Big play Maddox. And Jackson. Let me just audible to a bunch of runs. What we're looking for is can he create? Does he get yards that aren't given to him? And sometimes it takes these running backs a while to develop that skill set. I know it did for Marcus Payne, but once it got there, it really got there. And Bonds obviously wasn't great last season. Ooh, tough play. Nice, coming back for it. I have a plan already for the punter, don't worry. For how we're going to test him out. A little escapability there. Enough. But it took every ounce of speed he had. Waiting for Jackson to break a tackle. Ready. 
Oh, that was nice. That was awesome. I think Houston can step in for Joyce and do pretty well. I'm just hoping there aren't a whole lot of drops to go with uh, the big plays. That was a concern for Joyce early, but he fixed that fast. Let's change formations again and go three wide. A playbook revamp is going to be in the works too, so... Before I get to the next offseason uh, practice stream, I'm going to need to do that. Playbook's got to get set. And I can show sliders after we get through practice too. I really like where they've gotten... Yeah, we have freshman running backs to take a look at, too. Ooh, settle down. There we go. That's a good throw. Oh, man, we got range at safety for days. Yeah, we're not seeing anything special from Jackson. There's a broken tackle, though. Right, let's switch it up. I think that running back two spot is wide open. And some of our best players for it don't even play the position. We could play Drake Maddox at running back. 86 speed. Uh, trucking and break tackle are okay. Like Maddox could legitimately play running back if we had to do that. But I'm not counting on it. Um, why don't we try Jermaine McIntyre, who is a true freshman Typically somebody I would look at red shirting. Um, the ratings here aren't stellar. Let's see what he can do. McIntyre at least has 88 speed. But his acceleration and agility are really low. Yeah, he feels kind of like a heavy running back. That cutting ability that I look for is not there from what I've felt so far. Jeez, get out of the A-gap. He can chuck it down there, though, for sure. Play action. Go for it all. I kind of want to see how far he can throw it. Good play to try it, too. Thanks, guys. Oh, come on! You kidding me with that? Offensive line getting destroyed up front. Hashtag Nuke Irvin. How about we give him some time, guys? I'm trying to test. He can throw it a long ways. We know that. And uh, the accuracy definitely stands out. Trying that again. Here we go. I mean, maybe we have to give Sean Merville a chance then. He's not a power back, I don't think, but he's an athlete, so he might have had a uh, higher upside. We could also look at playing Matt Reddick as a running back, but still developing him as a quarterback. Don't forget about that possibility. And maybe I should do some practice with Reddick. We have about 20, 25 minutes. Um, let's get Sean Merville in there first, though. He has speed, good enough acceleration, and agility, thankfully. 
Okay, his break tackle and truck are low, so definitely a speed guy. I'm noticing Maddox is having a lot of trouble separating from Akinjide, but Akinjide is a senior, good safety. Yep. Love that play. Oh, we'll get to we'll get to our uh, our great punter. Don't you worry. They tackled my running back. This looks like a completely different dynasty right now. Look at our personnel compared to last year on offense. Of course, James Huggins with his 90 speed running you down is going to make you look very slow. Thank you for all these extra blitzes. Appreciate that. This defense can play some ball, I tell you that. Nice throw. Ready. Green 90. Green 90. Sully could f use a few reps, I agree. I think we'll sub out Houston and get Sully in there. We know Houston quite well. So now that we've seen Irvin a little bit also, um, do we want to see what Reddick can do? Like emergency situation here, Matt Reddick. At least a few plays, we have time for that. Let's change their formation to nickel normal. Maybe less blitzing in here. So Matt Reddick is out there now. He does not have the best arm, but he can run. Drop by Maddox. And we'll see that here on display. His accuracy, though, is only in the 70s. So uh, that would just really concern me if he had to play meaningful quarterback snaps as a freshman. Overthrew him. Picked off by Tommy Jordan. I'm sure he could run the quarterback draw just fine. I'm not worried about that. Got it to work for a few. Oh, man, trying to go across the field like that. Yeah, Reddick could be a gadget player for some situations, but even calling him the legitimate backup quarterback is a stretch. Like, you got to be able to throw the football. You want to see his arm? Here's 82 throw power, which isn't, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of passable. But combined with, like, 73 accuracy... Now, Blackjack, what kind of a player did you make in Colt Sully? Honestly, like, how does he make these plays? Sully just makes all these, like, 2% chances happen. And that's it. Spec catch through the roof. What if he's got to throw some timing? That worked. The perfect underthrow. I need to get, like, I don't know exactly how to throw the perfect underthrow, but 
there's an art to it. Because then it becomes an uncontested play. Yeah, I do want to get Mervil some more carries here. See what exactly he can do. This running back two job is not exactly looking like a lot of fun. But our defense is so good. Remind me before I end the stream, by the way, to take a look at Penn State's depth chart. Just because I gotta know if Warwick's starting, and if he is, they're on the schedule. Alright, Red X getting into a groove. Like, sometimes the accuracy issues don't arise. Sometimes they will. Redick is not quite as good of an athlete as Brandon Warren was, but he is fast. Merville can cut the way I like. They need to stop blitzing. Just play shell coverage. I think Cabral just destroyed someone's career. Redick might also have lower uh, acceleration compared to Warren. He doesn't feel as explosive. Like when you decide to take off. But now he's throwing really accurately. I'll have to check out Fresno, too. The perfect underthrow sounds like the title of a book it does. Alright, one more throw here with Matt Reddick today. Maybe we'll get back to him in the, uh, the next thing, the next stream. Alright, so a little glimpse of what he can do and bring to the table. And I think it's time to see what our punter can do. And the way I wanted to test this out was, how does he punt if we're backed up here in our own territory? We started the game with a three and out. What happens? He's a left-footed punter too! Oh, man. He's a left-footed punter. <laughs> oh, man. It's only going to make him even more of a legend in this stream. From the 30. 10, 20, 30, 42 yards. I mean, it's not great. That There's obviously no wind. Oh. Let's try it again. 10, 20, 30, 41 yards. So we're looking at, you know, low average range. <laughs> Here's one thought, though. When you angle kicks, sometimes they can't get to it. And because his kicks won't go as far, it makes it even tougher to get to it. Which means there could be potential long rolling punts. Let's see if I can get one here. They can be tough to pull off. Sometimes I get them on accident. But also, Houston has really good speed. Yeah, come on, Houston. Let me... Let me show them what I'm talking about. Yeah, we'll do a line drive. That was a good call. But I might have to go even lower. <laughs> it's 
It's not working perfectly. Ugh, oh, Houston gets them all. <laughs> oh man, these punts are too much. But, if you think about it, it's easier to have the coffin corner punts with a weaker kicker because you don't have to like handle the power and guesstimating how far it's going to go. It's somewhat easier with this style of a punter. If we're punting from like our 40, I might be able to get some of these to work. Like that. That's what we're looking for. See? Playmakers play punter. <laughs> Glad we all got to enjoy that. One player we haven't talked much about today, but we'll talk about more moving forward, is left end Trey Walker. He might still play some fullback this year, but I want him to develop as a defensive end. And with us just losing depth, I think that we're going to see Trey Walker get some snaps this year, and I'm excited to see what he can do. Six foot eight, 245 pounds. He can play the run, he can play the pass. He rushes primarily with power. He has 74 speed, 82 strength. He's a good player. If his awareness dropped off, I'll have to catch it later. Um, but yeah, that's one more player to keep in mind. No more cutting punts, Kane. Yep, I got to show them all now, apparently. Why don't we go and try more of a, a spread wide open look with this team then? Luke Irvin. Super chat from Blake. Had something to say, but I forgot. Well, thank you, Blake. <laughs> if you uh, say, if you remember, hopefully I catch it in the actual chat. So any thoughts going into the season, everybody? I'm excited. I'm more excited now than I was before the stream. And I think that's the mark of a, a fun off season. Yep, we're going to check out Lameca. We're going to back out, go to the main menu, sliders, check on Penn State, check on Fresno. That's not a bad little play there. I can't wait for Kalispell year 11. Day needs quarterback reps. Let's not get out of control here. Look what Irvin can do. I love those diving animations. It looks so good. Oh, man. We were about to see him throw an absolute missile downfield. And it was... Oh, that was going to be perfect. The cornerback... Why does the pass rush have to be here? That was going to be awesome. <laughs> he caught Sully. Oh, man. Okay, it's Foster. 99 man coverage. Oh, come on, Sully. Lost him. See, I think that Irvin's arm is going to really pay off in the deep game because most teams don't have safeties like us, which means we can really take advantage of those safeties with his arm. I forget what Warren's throw power and accuracy was, but, um... I feel like Irvin has a more dynamic arm from the pocket. And thank you, Blackjack, for the super chat. Looking forward to Kojo whooping you for three to four years. Well, 
History says that Stanford has our number. We'll see if in year 11 that can change. I can't believe we're 0-3 against them. Probably gonna exit practice soon and do all the wrap up I talked about. One more. One more for the people! Let's go. Let's go. Luke Irvin season is underway. And I'm excited about it. Dominic Day, the walk on left footed punter. Ah. Oh. <laughs> of course that happened today. Nuke Irvin. I kind of like that nickname. Now we got to get him on the Texans. Nuke Irvin to Nuke Hopkins. Day needs a touchdown by year's end. I think he had, what do you have, like 71 speed or am I making that up? I can't believe we're revisiting this punter again, but I feel like he at least had running ability. No, no. That was something else I did today. Never mind. Never mind. But while we're here, got to check on the sliders quick. Um, I did work with the sliders last year. I had them set basically probably by the Colorado game. I stopped really messing with stuff. And I think we had some really fun games last year. Granted, we were still dominant for much of it. But 25 speed threshold, whatever your preference is there, you can do whatever. And then... Uh, here's the custom AI for the user. More so, I had to do some changing to the CPU. And for the CPU, I moved their QB accuracy up to 20. I had them at 10, but I just felt like even good quarterbacks were missing open receivers and taking too long. I felt like moving up to 20 wouldn't change the accuracy much, but it would affect their intelligence, and I thought we saw that down the stretch. Um, running back ability up to 75, so they utilize more moves, and they kind of run better. Run defense at 60. I feel we get good balance out of this. And now let's check on a couple schools. First off, the depth chart for Fresno State. If you missed earlier, Montrell Bonds decided Kalispell was not going to work, and he's now here. And he's a higher overall than any of these players. So after his red shirt season, he will be the running back number one, it looks like. And then for Penn State, at quarterback, after graduating their uh, quarterback each of the last two drafts, QB1, Lameca Warwick. You can count on us playing Penn State this year. I'm also checking Stanford. I want to know their quarterback situation. All right, we're not going to see Kojo for a bit. Robert Bostic. And then, oh, this is bad news for Kojo Blackjack. There's a freshman here who's an 80. That's tough. Oh, yeah, remember uh, Quan Tippins Blackjack? I just accidentally landed on South Florida um, you made Quan Tippins and maybe that would be a fun game for the schedule USF that'd be out of the ordinary they have a good running back some decent receivers including one named Andre Johnson I think playing Penn State and USF is a good start to our non-conference schedule this is a, a solid team. With a walk-on kicker. Oh, man, that was fun. That was a really fun offseason, everybody. Thanks for coming today. I appreciate it very much. 
We're going to be doing more with Kalispell this coming week. I'll have another uh, practice stream where we'll take another look at the team with a revamp playbook. I'll probably save this playbook and set it aside just in case. But for sure, I need something more akin to what we ran with JR Battle. Less option. Or maybe I can stay with the playbook and just revamp it a little bit, but just ignore the option unless we have the right quarterback there. Um, I feel pretty good about this season, though. I'm excited about our players. I think that um, for a team that's had as much success as we've had, we at least have a very interesting season ahead of us with a new quarterback, brand new running backs, brand new wide receivers, a new tight end, and some new faces along the offensive line. There are three new starters, or two new starters this season. Uh, uh, so USF. Let's count on them and Penn State. Don't let big play day go to the draft early. Okay, we'll keep him here for a while. But thanks for coming, everybody. That was a very fun offseason. Hope you're excited for Kalispell Year 11. I feel like this is the kind of offseason to rejuvenate the series a little bit if it was getting old for anybody. I think this is a, a fun way to look ahead to year 11. So thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all with more Kalispell Dynasty soon. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. See you later.